Oops, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Um, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, okay. Let me just begin again. Uh, so, yeah. So, like the like how we saw how we saw the changes in music, the changes in you know worship music specifically, uh, the way people used music in church they, with the, with the understanding with the instruments and so on. Um, so it's the same way the we see that the worship ministry itself, right? changing okay sometimes we think okay why is there so much of thought and so much of planning and seems so complex it's such a simple thing to worship in spirit and in truth right but we see that yes you know the the, the way the church has changed over the years in the sense you know the, the the basics are the same the foundations are the same the expressions are different the expressions of worship are you know we know that uh, God has given us that um, uh, space, right? Given us that freedom and the flexibility, um, as long as it's spirit and truth. And therefore, we see that there are different expressions of it. And therefore, with that comes the you know, the importance of uh, the ministry itself, right? Uh, and the place of the worship ministry in the church, and so on, right? So, uh, which is why we we spend time looking at these things and um, and looking at some of the um, you know the qualifications, skills, and all that which is required, right? So, if one is in the worship ministry, it can be even more engaging. But if one is not, uh, then it's uh, it's good to have an understanding of it because you know maybe you will be facilitating others uh, who can be part of it. Or maybe you are establishing, you know, a, a church or a or a ministry, and which which will, you know, which includes, uh, you know, worship ministry, and then, um, so you'll be in a better place to, uh, you know, facilitate this, you know, even to grow this ministry, right? Okay. So uh, while we are looking at um, uh, the, you know, the qualifications and the questions that we must ask ourselves about a worship leader. Um, you know, so are they doing what they do to serve, or is it to gain some kind of respect or something for themselves? Right? Um, is it something that they are serving? Is are they ministering? You know, minister to minister in the the full meaning of that term is to serve. Right? So uh, one who is serving is one who ministers. Right? Uh, so. Are they really serving or are they doing something to gain respect? So, you know, in today's scenario, we need to be careful, right? Because everything is instantly visible, uh, transmitted across the globe. And so we see some part of it, right? And we think that is the full thing, right? Um, you know, for example, even you know, like service services are live streamed and you see part, of, uh, you know, you, you see some, you know, very, very, uh, what do you call, exciting, you know, cuts and edits of certain parts of the service, right? So, uh, I remember, you know, watching these, uh, some of these worship songs and worship uh, videos and the editing makes it very attractive. Okay, the lighting and the editing. The editing meaning the you know the angles, the close-ups, and the uh, and the different kinds of shots. You know when you put it together, it makes it very exciting, right? But when you, when you're there actually in the service and you get physically, you just get one shot of it, right? In the sense, one view. The stage is all that is all you see, right? Um, you don't get a view, a close-up of the, you know, the singer. You don't get a close-up of the drummer. You don't, you don't, you get one view in when you're physically there in person. So, so I realized that hey, it's not as, as exciting as the video, right? The video visually, I'm, I'm talking about visually. The video makes it look even more exciting, or you know, even more, I, I don't know, visually appealing than what it is, right? So. In today's time, uh, with the technology, you can actually make anything look so enhanced, and you know it, it can look better than what it is. Right? So one needs to be careful. Right? Uh, this whole thing of why am I doing this? 
right? Why am I in this ministry? And also to be careful to not really draw attention to ourselves or not to draw you know, popularity and fame. It's one thing to grow the ministry. It's one thing to reach people with, you know, with the message or be a blessing to as many people as possible. But in doing so, because that's the reason everyone gives. We want to reach as many as possible. This needs to reach the people. This needs to be you know, appealing to people so that they watch it and all that. So that's the reason. That's the underlying reason people give. But then in doing so, sometimes what happens is you know, the, the attention draws to oneself, you know, rather than the glory going to God. You know, it's a very fine line. So we need to be careful, right? Why are we doing? Are we are we really serving? Um, you know, the, the next question actually helps, right? So yeah, they're doing all this, and and even the you know the following questions, they good, but are they, you know, good? You know, family members are they part of the family? Are they, you know, uh, are they good members of the family? Are they, if they are married, are they good husbands? Are they good, you know, if they have children, are they good, you know, are they are they good mothers and you know fathers? You know, in all those things, are only on stage do they put on a, you know, a front, a face, a mask? Off stage, are they different people? You know. Because we need to be willing to do the ordinary things. We need to be willing to clean toilets, arrange chairs. We need to be willing to sweep the floor. We need to be willing to do that. That that gives us a heart to serve, right? So, um, so that's the, that's the thing, you know. That if you're saying, okay, I, I'm a great minister of God, you know, don't ask me to, you know, cook the food or don't ask me to wash the vessels and or change the baby's, uh, you know, diapers, you know, then there's something wrong because you're not. In a place of, uh, you know, hum uh, uh, you're not humble. You're not in a place of humility, but actually, you allowed pride and position to come into your life, right? So, so that's the thing. So, what will keep us grounded, right? What will keep us grounded in the truth and in the foundation is our willingness in all areas of life. It's not just one thing, right? We just that's the problem when we focus on, you know, this. Yes, we need to be intensely passionate about worship, about the Lord, and so on. But if we are going to do it to the negligence of everything else, you know, where God designed family, God designed human relationships. So if we're going to neglect all that, then pride and uh, focus on just the external things, fame and popularity creeps in, right? Okay, another question, you know, are they willing to train others to take over for them? So which is mentoring stewarding the grace that God has given so you're teaching others you know some people are uh, you know they they're so good they're very good at it but if you ask them you know how did you you know can you help can you show me and uh, you know uh, they're not willing to you know it's a very tight secret right it's a very close held secret they're not willing to share they're not willing to you know even share the resources right um, maybe some lessons etc so so the thing is, you know, are you willing to, you know, share with others? You know, we may not be able to teach everybody, right? We may not be able to train everybody or train everybody who wants, you know. But in the sense, pe people just email and say, uh, you know, can you teach? Can you train? Uh, you can't do it for everyone. You know, your time is limited. But do you have a heart to teach others? That's the thing. For those whom people had placed close to you, in your circle, right, whom you meet, maybe weekly, monthly, whatever, are you willing to teach or train? That that again shows that you you, know, you care for the heart, you care for the things of God, and you are willing to let others go far and beyond where you have got. That's an important thing, you know. Many times. We, we, you know, in ministry also, sadly, we want people to be maybe as good as we are, or maybe slightly less than we are. But if it, if it's, you know, if somebody says, hey, he's actually, he's better, you know, he's leading worship better, or he's preaching better than, so, you know, then, then yourself, if somebody says that, then we want to just bring them down a little bit, you know, keep them, you know, restrained or under that 
thing. Uh, but that should not be so because uh, if you look at uh, you know, John 14, uh, 12 is a classic example, right? Where the Lord says that those who believe in me, they will do the things I do and even greater things. So it means the Lord is just released. He's saying, okay, that's fine. You know, you do the greater works. I want the church who believes in me, I want my disciples who, who, you know, who believe in me and who follow me to do things greater than what I did. The greater works you will do also because you, because I go to the Father. So that's God's, you know, the, that's the Lord Jesus is perspective, right? So he's so free, not insecure in any way. Um, so, so should we be, be, right? So we should be able to train and uh, teach, um, help others to go further. So that's a good place to be in. So if someone has that quality, if there's someone has a quality to, you know, uh, teach and train, that's a great thing. Right? So are they skilled at what they do? We looked at that. Are they teachable, eager to learn? Are they willing to quietly care for the poor as much as they are willing to stand on the stage, right? So, so many times, uh, we, you know, we see folks, people who are who are okay as long as you know they're willing to serve as long as the spotlight is on them or there are people who are watching and people are applauding. Right? But if it's something that they need to do on their own, quietly behind the scenes, then there is a hesitation to do that. Right? As long as it's publicized, as long as it's on social media or whatever. They're willing to do it, but then if it's behind closed doors where no one will know, then unwilling to do it, right? Or unwilling to do it for a long time. So, you know, that's the question. You know, are they willing to care, especially for the poor and and all those things that no one will come and pat their back, right? Are they loving, gentle, generous with all those around them? Do they have a substantial interior life with God? I think that's the first thing. So the second question we ask, right? secret life, interior life with God. So an interior life, which is not, you know, which actually contributes to their external life, your quiet time, your personal life, which affects your lifestyle, right? your outside choices, your decisions, everything, is affected or influenced by your personal life with God. Right? It's not two different things. Right? I do something else. I do live like, you know, uh, my values, everything is like the world outside. Then I'm claiming to have a, you know, spend a lot of time in prayer, etc. Then it's a confusing thing. You know, why? How can it be? Right? Uh, shouting at other people and, you know, uh, at the family and then saying, okay, I'm going to spend a lot of time in prayer, etc. You know, so that that personal connect with God should reflect in their personal, I mean, in their uh, lifestyle, uh, external lifestyle, outside, uh, you know, interaction with people, etc. So these are questions for us to consider. Okay, now, not, we won't find everyone who's scoring a perfect 10 on all these questions, right? Because uh, people are in different stages of growth, people are in different stages of maturity. So, what are these questions for? One, to see that if they have a potential, right? If there is, you know, it, it need not be a perfect 10, but are they there? You know, are they at least five? Are they, you know, at least three? And, and with a willingness to grow, right? That is something that we can, you know, we can gauge, you know, are they, do they have this? Um, well, certain things that we cannot compromise are, of course, their faith in God, their walk with God, their character, integrity, etc. These are things that one cannot compromise, right? Because you know, sometimes, like, like certain churches have a different perspective on this. Like they say, okay, we can have professional, like musicians or singers or you know others, we can have them on the team. So they they feel that okay we can do that uh, that's okay, you know? um, but then we realize that worship is a spiritual activity. So someone who needs to be a believer, someone who is a worshiper, right? So all these qualities are important, are or, or at least it should not be you know compromised. So. So some people have that, you know, I can have someone who is not even a believer 
you know, who, on the worship team. Right? As long as they are skilled, as long as they have the, you know, especially in the in the in the, in the when it comes to maybe some singers, maybe not worship leaders, but maybe singers, maybe musicians, and so on. You know, I've heard people say, you know, uh, let them be there, then they'll come to know the Lord somehow. But then, you know. They can be part of the church, but if you're going to put them on a platform, especially on a ministry platform, and you're saying that they need to, you know, uh, lead in ministry, how can they lead? How can they, you know, lead people to encounter Jesus? And how can they facilitate or take people deeper into worshiping the Lord, whom they have not encountered themselves? Right. So that's a big. You know that's that's that'd be a challenge. So um, we need to un understand that. Right? Any questions here? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Any questions on this? Okay. Okay. So um, let's move on. Well, let's look at uh, the role of the singers again. Um, yeah, I think someone has a question. Um, yes, Nina, sure. I uh, just want, can you hear me, Pastor? Yeah. I uh, wanted to clarify, is it essential for the worship leader to be playing an instrument? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily. So they don't have to play an instrument, but since um, you know it's uh, they carry the weight of responsibility of leading worship and also you know setting the um, tone uh, or the direction for that worship time um, they need to have a an understanding of music, music. yeah so that would that would really you know if if they can learn if they can grow in it it will be great uh, but uh, not necessarily. You know, there are worship leaders who don't play any kind of musical instrument, um, but it it would be an added thing, definitely. Yes, advantage. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Right. Yeah, Prince. Uh, Pastor, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, as Pastor, like, uh, when we are going to before, what we see, like things that we have to look in a worship leader there are certain things there mm -hmm. like, and uh, the uh, I just want to ask about this calling yeah so uh, like we know like like for a person to be in a worship team yeah uh, like is it need, like more than like uh, I don't know how to put it. So it's like they are skilled. Yeah. They have knowledge uh, okay. in music and they are good, but still they need a calling for them to be a part of worship team. Oh, your like, question is okay. Okay. Do they need a calling? Do they need to be called to be part of the worship team? Yeah. Or to lead worship. Uh, like how we see this fivefold ministry, right? Yeah, so is it the same way for people to be in worship or to lead worship? Uh, okay, so so the thing is, um, see, um, like we, I, I've come across people who are gifted, gifted musically, who are worshippers, right? So and who who definitely have the ability to lead worship, but in the season of life they are in, right? So they 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 realize that God has called them for something else. Like, for example, the person whom I know, um, has the ability to lead worship and has led worship in the past, right? Um, plays multiple instruments and so on. But then realize that God's call, specific call, uh, is not to be in worship ministry. You will lead worship if, it, if it's required, maybe, you know, but not to be in worship ministry, but to uh, to be in more of a teaching, mentoring kind of a you know role, uh, you know. So, and, and also in the corporate world, so that is what he does. So he realized that that is the call. So that is what we mean, you know, when we are talking about you know worship ministry, and typically we are talking about worship leaders. 
um, in the worship ministry, and this is what they 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 want to do. Right? This is what they're called to do. Um, so, in that sense, yes, they need to understand that uh, is there a call on their life um, for this? Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, Basu. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like for <clears throat> to just further, uh, like they to serve in the team, you know, to serve in worship, they can. You know, anybody who's uh, who's gifted in this area and then they have a heart, well, they can. They can serve. Um, then they, you know, well, if, if God is leading them in that particular thing, maybe. But God might lead them in a, something which is very different also. Even though they might be, you know, they might have some ab a talent and ability, uh, God might lead them to do something else. So they just need to realize that uh, and not fight it and go with it, right? So here, when we are talking about calling, it's uh, particular to uh, to minister in worship ministry to this area, but not just yeah worship. for the large part. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. To yeah, we're calling. Uh, we're talking about that, right? Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. But but even if they're serving, like for example, no, like um, uh, so the the season of life is also very important. Like even if they're serving, um, like uh, I've heard like conversations with people who uh, who used to right who were, when they were maybe when they were single uh when they I mean, they were not married they they used to help in this in their church which they were part of in this in worship ministry but now mm, they're in a season of life where they have young children etc and um, they you know they they are gifted they have the experience but you know is that god's call for them in this season you know obviously it's no, right? They they cannot rather. So so things like that to consider, right? The season of life also to consider. It's a very important thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the role of singers. Uh, you have anyone else? Any questions? No. Okay. Let's look at the role of singers in the in the worship team, right? So the singers actually facilitate. Uh, you know, why should we have a group of singers? Why should we have a choir? Uh, one one thing that happens is it's an inspiration. It's a motivation for people to um, to sing along, right? Uh, especially when you hear other voices and uh, you know those who may not consider themselves to have a great voice. Maybe you know they they are motivated. They are encouraged to sing and to to take that step to worship God freely. Right, uh, so singers also need to be worshippers first. They need to be, uh, you know, worshippers at heart, and in addition, you know, uh, to their gifting. Right. So, uh, when it comes to, you know, the finer aspects of leading worship, when the worship leader is maybe exhorting, when the worship leader is maybe, um, you know, leading into something prophetic in nature and spontaneous in nature. Whether it's praise or worship, then the singers can actually, you know, help that. You know, like uh, create a background with their spontaneous singing, with that overflow of worship and praise. Um, uh, they can actually, you know, kind of stir up uh, more of that. You know, so when we're talking about inspiration to worship, uh, insp inspiring congregation, motivating congregation to worship, it's not just in those known songs, but it's also. In those, you know, spontaneous to release oneself in worship uh, when it comes to those moments, spontaneous moments and and moments of praise and uh, spontaneous songs being raised up as well, right? So they, the singers help in motivating that. So, um, so that's the role of the singers, right? Okay. Um, so we looked at. Um, uh, we were we were looking at this whole thing of okay, maybe you are. You know, you are overseeing a worship ministry, or maybe overseeing a church which has a worship, uh, you know, worship team. Uh, and then, uh, is it, you know, what are what are some things that you can put in place? I think Shira asked that question. Like, okay, when people don't have a heart, when people have skill, when people have, you know, uh, have a heart but don't have skill, etc. So, one one thing we said was that. Uh, we need to have regular times of teaching revelation so that people will grow in that maybe training also so people can grow um but the other thing that we also said is to have 
uh, or to find out who are those people who who are there in the congregation or you know and how can they be part of a team right part of the ministry so so how would you do it right how would you gauge how would you do it right so when especially when the ministry becomes larger and we don't know people personally right so how would you do it in an unbiased manner right so you don't okay i just want to i know this person and i know them well so i'm just putting on the team no it cannot be something random like that it has to be an unbiased decision so it's good to have a process in place right so that is why we have an audition process where uh, a person auditions we meaning the person puts on display and there is an evaluation there is an assessment uh, of that so that we can actually come to a conclusion and say okay let's have this person right so an audition process is important it's unbiased so people won't point and say oh that person is well known to pastor or pastor's favorite that's why they put him on the worship team or you know pastor's son is there that's why he is putting on the worship team they'll they'll say such things right and we don't want such things to happen right we wanted to be very unbiased we wanted to be without any partiality irrespective you know people want to serve they should be able to serve but there should be some qualifications and so an audition process helps right so uh, it helps add people to the team it helps increase the level of musical presentation because we might have some people who are you know very very skilled maybe have a heart but then you don't even know right so it will help you know maybe if the congregation is even 100 or 200 it's it's very difficult to know who's there who knows who can play music etc they might be just coming and going so when we announce an audition when we say we are having auditions for the ministry then it helps draw them it helps connect them to the ministry right uh, and also increase the level of musical presentation right and to pro provide a consistent common and helpful method for growing the worship ministry right worship ministry need not be just a handful of people you can grow to you know n number of people and it this helps right um yeah so um we do have a process here audition process and we can talk about that so that um you know it it might be it might be, you know you don't you don't have to do the same thing right in uh, our worship ministry do not need to have the same process i know of churches who have very different processes which helps them but this is something that we kind of over the years it, it has changed over the years improved over the years uh, this whole process and right now this is what we are doing okay so so uh, prior to the audition okay even before the audition we decided that we will have something called a pre audition meeting okay so what is that meeting in that meeting we talk about what the worship ministry is about okay because when people come on sundays what they see on stage is their understanding of worship ministry okay They're saying okay i can come sunday morning i can come i can practice maybe and then sing or play you know so just give them an understanding hey th this is what worship ministry is and this is the expectation we have in worship ministry right so people can make an informed decision expectation what is expectation expectation of skill expectation of character expectation of lifestyle expectation of commitment right so we're saying this is the expectation expectation of commitment meaning you know you need to be part of the church first of all before you can be part of the worship ministry a right? very important thing but because some people think okay uh, here's a good worship ministry i can be part of it but i can be part of some other church or multiple churches whatever no you're part of a church you're committed to the church this is your home church if you want to call it that and therefore you minister you're part of the team it's not the other way around right so your first commitment is to the body of believers i mean to christ obviously to the body of believers who are to that local church which is the expression of christ ministry so you're part of that committed commitment to that 
so this understanding not everyone has right so we share about that and say this is what it is you know are you ready for it now commitment of time you know it requires one to be able to come for the practice or the rehearsal first of all personal practice secondly practice with the team and this would happen during a week it can be happening on a friday night saturday night whatever are you able to do this right are you able to commit to this because that's important so we we you know place it present it before the team that it's not just about singing but it's about being a worshiper etc so um uh, even before this pre audition sorry we ask people to fill in a form so in that form uh, we ask some questions like um, you know why do you want to audition why do you want to serve in this ministry right why not any other ministry why not ushering why not set up you know why do you want to serve in worship ministry and people give their reasons so we can actually find out the intention the motivation for them to serve then we also ask them about their testimony right what is it you know when did you encounter jesus are you following jesus and some people say i don't know about this and then they actually share the gospel with them and give them some time right saying you take some time no hurry you know you just become a believer or maybe you've not yet become a believer just take some time understand what salvation is about uh, you know make a decision about following christ right so uh, so we've had those kind of scenarios also so we you know uh, talk to them uh, about the commitment to christ commitment to you know whichever church they are uh, and then give them the expectations of uh, worship ministry right so in the pre audition they decide whether they want to serve or not to serve and they said oh i thought only sunday morning i can come oh now i have to practice also i have to prepare also uh, maybe not right now some people are very happy okay i can do that right so all that then um when we see that form and we say okay they have uh, you know when we have doubts we talk to them you know, you written like this um that uh, you know you're already part of another church and then how can you be part of this then they say no no i i go there i come there and all so we clarify all those things saying you know you're faithful there please remain there uh, etc then we send them the songs which they need to learn and come prepared on the day of the audition right so so this uh, you know the, so it's not song which they which, which is their favorite song you know uh it's something that we can assess so we tell them okay learn it come so this is these are the things based on which you will be assessed right so we spiritually we've kind of assessed okay why they want to serve their testimony their motivation for ministry all that kind of got that and if you are satisfied we send them the, these songs and uh, ask them to come prepared right so they they come prepared they learn the song they come prepared whether it's musicians singers whatever so their criteria is already there and if they are singers uh, we tell them okay uh, you need to be able to sing in tune you need to be able to sing harmony you need to be able to sing in time uh, you need to be have an understanding of tone and dynamics and all that right so um musicians same thing right for drummers it should be a uh, different criteria for you know electric guitarists different criteria so we give them that so um they come prepared and then they play sing whatever on that day and there are people who are assessing right not just one person we make sure at least there are two or three right so that you can get uh, a good uh, come uh, you know a good assessment so based on that <clears throat> we choose right so this so something like this can be there in every church right an audition process um like i know that challenge is like what if there are nobody you know <laughs> uh, i think you were saying you know not, not enough people only one person or two people are there and if you put this audition process that they'll get scared and go <laughs> so in such cases you can actually nurture them encourage them teach them you know without them being part of the actual worship leading you can actually you have the time maybe they have the you know they have the interest you can actually teach them or ask them to go get trained 
musically you know all that can be done right so when it comes to audition results you know there could be three three options you know three things that we can decide one is they are selected they are good we they you know they qualify in all aspects they selected second thing we give them time and we say okay you're not you're not yet ready please take three months six months and then come back when we have the next audition come back right third third option is we say we, we we suggest you know why don't you try serving in some other area of ministry maybe music worship is not something that you are you know called for why don't you try serving any other area so we tell them um you know you need to tell them graciously you need to tell them politely without you know um right so so this is something that happens so after the audition okay after they get selected then there is an orientation okay i think um uh, the, uh, i don't know as bible college students you had an orientation to the sunday service right you would come and see what is all you know how the sunday service happens or who are the teams etc so similarly the worship team also has an orientation one would be okay the general setup you know maybe they didn't they they used to coming to church at uh, you know the start of the service maybe 10 o'clock 8 o'clock whatever so we ask them to come to us before and show them what all happens and to show the all this happens in preparation to the service so that they can get an understanding also very important thing is that they get to attend the practice of the team rehearsal sessions right at least for six rehearsals we tell them okay you come prepared so the song list goes out during the week they come prepared to prepared in such a way so they are you know able to sing you know they come with that preparation but they don't get to minister on sunday right they come prepared they are part of the practice maybe happens on a friday night or a saturday night but they don't get to minister that sunday they they come like that for six uh, practices Right, which means which is actually six weeks right it could be one and a half months or if they skip a few it could be two months whatever so so what is the advantage of doing this what do you think of having an orientation like this is there an advantage or is it like more like a disadvantage what do you think and they have a i think is a like benefit for them them also like they will get the understanding like what is happening instead of singing coming and then singing like what's happening actually in sunday service and mm. how seriousness they should to be they will get the understanding like that right so they get to understand they get to learn okay and also the seriousness of it okay anything else that can happen during this time i think so uh, yes yeah, yeah, sir yeah go ahead maybe we can also find out how serious and consistent they are yeah so so certain other aspects like right? are they on time right uh are they so all those things which we normally are not able to help or assess during an audition time you know this this would come out you know are they prepared for it and does they see more more uh, importantly does their regular life schedule allow them to do this right maybe they have office meetings so very very genuine reasons right office meetings other responsibilities they have an interest but they need to you know they need to take care of other responsibilities as well maybe they you know they are staying somewhere you know far away and so all those things are there so this will give them to get into that kind of routine learning the song coming spending 2 hours going back and in a place like bangalore you know you know like you need to spend maybe 45 minutes in traffic to get there so which means they are spending about 4 hours setting aside 4 hours in their you know uh, in a in a day uh, weekly just to be part of a practice time so is that something that they can invest in right? is that something that they can commit to right we talk about it they might say okay but then actually when you physically do it then you realize okay can i do this is it possible 
you know do i want to all those things right and also we get to understand they get to meet the teams right? they get to meet the different teams for over 6 weeks they get to learn different songs for 6 weeks so that's i know you know if, if you if you're saying okay we sing about five songs in a service there might be some repetitions so you can either learn 30 new songs or at least 20 songs you know uh, you learn it you study it because what happens is you know when we are in the congregation and when we are singing a song you may not actually study the song right you may not you may not even though you might be a musician or a singer you might not put that kind of focus into a song you know how many times is the chorus sung how is the bridge sung you know we, we may not do that but actually when they are part of a team and preparing to sing uh, you know as part of the team then they get to study the song it's, it's like reading the word and studying the word you know it's a big difference right so they get to learn okay this is what, how it is sung this is how i need to play you know all those finer details of it and not just one or two, but then 20 different songs. Right? They get to do that. So it's a great time uh, for them also. And we've had people after the orientation to come and say, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And so uh, it's it's not, you know, I'm, I'm unable to do this. I'm not happy doing this. I can't do it. So we said, fine, that's OK. So that is why, you know, without putting them in the team or on stage, uh, uh, you know, as part of the service, even before that, these are all safeguards that can actually help, you know, both the team, the church, as well as themselves personally. So, so this this audition process, orientation process, it's a great, great help, right? So um, um, to find out the commitment, to find out, uh, you know, to set the expectations, you know, realistic expectations, right? Okay. Um, any questions about the audition process? Okay. So audition plus, you know, the the then registering, filling the forms, audition, pre-audition, the audition, the orientation, right? All these things actually give a good understanding of who are the people whom we are actually putting in, right, uh, on the worship uh, team, right? Okay. Um, another aspect. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Ashur, what should be the limit for songs? What should be the limit for songs? Like how many songs? Uh, so that depends on, like, uh, the time given for the worship time, right? In a worship, like, so let's say if it's a, like a worship evening, a worship night, or all night uh, thing, then you can have many songs. Like, uh, as a worship leader, uh, how many songs? Uh, you have to know. I have to know. Well, for us, see, the, the, now this is for the uh, worship team, like this audition, everything is for the worship team. So so they will, you know, at least by the time they start serving the team, they will know at least maybe 20 songs, right? They learn at least 20 songs. But the, for, well, the, for the person who's leading the worship, <clears throat> now the leading worship bit, uh, I just need to explain that. We don't audition for worship leaders. Like in, in APC, we don't audition people for worship leading. Right? So worship, first of all, we just take people for being part of the team, either singer or a musician. Then worship leading, it's a separate process. Like what we do is um, like we, we, we ask people to lead one song. <clears throat> it might happen on a Sunday morning. We ask people to lead one song. Then slowly, uh, we ask them to lead uh, one section. Like right? maybe they ask them to start the service and do maybe two two songs, whatever. And then we ask them to, uh, you know, maybe do the second part of it. So we ask them to lead part of the worship time. Then we we call it as co-leading, right? So one person leads and the other person leads again with them. So so the you know, it's like they get to learn that. And then we put them for uh, leading the entire worship time. So this is how the worship leading happens. So the so worship leader would also know, you know, similar number of songs and so on. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but the selection of songs, 
of course that's a different uh, thing for the different topic um like how many songs do you need to have for a worship time depends right you can have two songs maybe or also also you know have three or four songs but but the thing is you can't have it's it's always good not to have too many songs in a worship time right so flood the or pack the time with too many songs because we are going from song to song jumping from song to song rather than you know that it's good to have uh you know enough number of songs which give which enable people to worship freely and also um which enable us to stay and uh, um you know soak in that particular truth what we are declaring you know stay there and then and then move on to the next one so about the number of songs in the worship uh, service right okay i hope that answered the question right uh, okay 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 another aspect is okay so two more minutes is rostering of teams right so uh, roster typically meaning a schedule right uh, so um, a roster is very important especially if it's multi location and multiple teams you need to have a roster so that everybody understands um who is doing what on a particular sunday right okay okay so we'll stop here yeah and then um, we'll continue next uh, sunday for you know about i'm uh, sorry next week about planning and preparation for a worship service etc right okay right thank you god bless